There's no great love among Boer people for the English. No, there's no great love, no. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 terrifying Louis Theroux moments. Are you saying that he disrespected your gang? Pretty much. He bad mouthed your, your gang? That's basically what it's about. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at 10 chilling moments Louis has gone through. Number 20. Meeting the Pimp Louis has come across quite a few despicable characters over the years, and Pimp Shedrick Smith definitely ranks among them. I was made to understand that you had been, and perhaps still are, a pimp. Yes, sir. Would that be correct? Well, uh, half of it is, I was a pimp. Louis knows all the facts. This man was locked up for pimping out a 15-year-old girl. Many allege that he was aware of her age and also forced her into the occupation. In her account, she says there were times she was with you when she wanted to uh, stop working and you would pressure her and say, you haven't made enough money yet. Well, if you read, if you read the documents correctly, I, I, this, this chick was only with me for seven days. What's also terrifying is that this man seems utterly remorseless. He even goes as far as to justify his actions, listing out his twisted views on women. And if they leave, uh, you give them some money back or not? Yeah, I give them some money back. How much? Nothing. It's clear Louis is sickened by this man, but he continues to press him. Number 19, Angry Wrestlers. These guys go through it every damn day, and you got the nerve to ask me that bullshit. Some pro wrestlers are so devoted to the craft, they will go to extreme lengths for the sake of kayfabe. Earlier in this episode, Louis asked Sarge a question which implied pro wrestling was fake. He took this personally. When Louis later attended one of his pro wrestling tryouts in the WCW power plants, Sarge put him through hell. You're gonna lead him out. No, you're not gonna give up. You're not gonna give up. I can't do it anymore. Giving up is not an option around here. Louis is clearly being targeted here for his earlier comments and is bullied by all the coaches. He's pushed to such extremes that he eventually ends up throwing up. It makes you wonder what they would have done to him had the cameras not been running. <laughs> that ain't nothing. Number 18, behind bars with violent inmates. See where you at? What do you mean? See where you at? You might come here, but you might be snitching on somebody's case and you might tell something. You want to know who you will, that's all. Louis visited Miami's notorious main jail, where alleged criminals are incarcerated while awaiting trial. Mixing among some of the most violent inmates, Louis delves into the unforgiving culture of the jail, where the majority of time is spent in communal cells, the weak are preyed upon, and the fighting is constant. It's made clear to Louis that he wouldn't last five seconds, but he shows no fear and keeps asking those difficult questions. Can we see your face? Why not? I don't want to see my face. In one particularly spine-chilling moment, Louis meets a prisoner held in solitary confinement for stabbing another inmate. Previous subjects have been interviewed in crowded cells, but we know that this guy is dangerous as the bars stay firmly in place. Why are you in red? Stabbing charge. A stabbing charge against who? Another inmate. Louis remains unfazed, but the sense of threat feels real. Number 17, Captive Lions. Louis's dark African hunting holiday raised a lot of questions about the ethics behind big game hunting. But one thing that was not debatable, however, is what these creatures would do if they got a hold of Louis. Why is he looking at us like that? He thinks you are a plate of food. When brought into a lion pen, Louis quizzes the breeder on how he feels about the creatures and whether it's right to slay them or not. Look at his eyes. You walk past them. Go and walk past them. Feel if you feel any love there. Walk past where? Next to the wall carrier. I'm not sure if I want to. No. Two things become apparent. The lions have their eyes on Louis, and that fence is not as sturdy as it looks. Louis is even reluctant to get close to them. <coughs> yeah. It's just a plain commodity. Number 16, the pastor. You can pick any moment from Louis's coverage of the Westboro Baptist Church, and it will send a chill down your spine. It's almost 18 months now, and the siege has got people eating their babies and their small children. 
and each other. This moment in particular stands out to us, as Louis is finally able to meet Pastor Phelps after one of his sermons. Louis's questions are innocent enough, but it's clear that the pastor is on the defensive the entire time and has a disdain for the crew. If you had just a little knowledge of the Bible, you would know that what you just said is stupidity in spades. I don't know how to deal with a question like that. It's clear that he believes the words he is preaching and truly believes that everyone outside the church is going to hell. An extremely eerie interaction with a terrifying individual. You don't know anything about me, Pastor. Yeah, Fox. I do. I know all oh. there's no about you. You're just an evil. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to go there. Okay, now this is about 15 minutes. Okay, thank you very much for your and time. It's nice to see you, and, and 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 good luck to you. Number 15, weaponized dogs. The LA Stories documentaries are some of Louis's lesser known work, but they prove that the journalist doesn't need a big premise to make us nervous. In City of Dogs, he meets some men from Compton who train pets as weapons against crime. You scared? Yeah, I think I am a bit No, scared. don't be this. You're not going to feel it. After watching one of these weaponized canines at work, Louis agrees to let it have a go at him too. Is he scared? Yes, and he looks it. But never wants to shrink from a challenge, he stays calm, stands his ground, and doesn't back out. Number 14, Shots Fired. One of the most dangerous places Louis has ever been is the streets of Johannesburg. As part of his Law and Disorder series, Louis met up with local enforcement in the South African capital and witnessed how dire things could be. Sheriff, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, sure. One of the officers just fired some shots. In this instance, he witnessed a group as they entered a hijacked building full of illegal immigrants. Though the occupants seemed pacifistic, the group removing them did not. <laughs> Jesus Christ, he's just firing at those guys. They opened fire with rubber bullets on those inside the building and the crowd gathering outside. This was apparently because these situations very quickly turn into riots. People do get hurt. We Lost do lose people. people yeah. How often? Two, three a month. Lose people? Lose people, get, yeah. What, get in, killed? In fights, yes. Number 13, Louis enters the hijacked building. But that wasn't the only nail-biting moment from Louis's trip to Johannesburg. Here, Louis was attended by local private security, but when they were reluctant to enter a hijacked building at night, Louis decided to do it anyway. What would happen if we can't go in? I do want to go in. I, well, you can, you can, you, I don't want to go inside. Someone who lives there. Reckless? Maybe. And the hijackers weren't particularly frightening, as it turned out. But when he calmly walks up those dark stairs, you can't help but be impressed. What exactly are we afraid of? <laughs> just, just guys with guns here. Yeah. They do have firearms here. Yeah. Number 12, Chimpanzee. It works because if he bites my nose off, then <laughs> you could be in trouble. <laughs> it's no little known fact that a teen chimpanzee is an incredibly dangerous creature to be around. So what compels some people to keep them in their homes? Louis thought to explore this in his documentary America's Most Dangerous Pets when he visited a chimp owner. As soon as the creature is let loose, it's clear something is wrong. There he comes. Hi. Oh shit! It charges directly at Louis and his crew and smashes a window in an attempt to get to them. Louis is so shaken by the experience that he and the team decide to leave. And I think we know we may have what we need, so you're afraid of March. <laughs> Number 11, the riots. So you think we should leave now? Yeah. In 2010, Louis investigated the highly illegal, highly organized back streets of Lagos, Nigeria. Here, he would meet the feared union leader, MC, who displayed his rather violent methods of controlling his people. In this instance, MC was seen handing out money to a large group of youths. His meaning behind this is not exactly clear to Louis, but his guide suggests it's a way to figure out who is in control. When the cash is handed out, the guide becomes very concerned for their safety. 
Louis is told they must leave immediately as a riot is seconds away from breaking out. Are we not safe now? We are not safe, so it's better we leave here. Okay. Number 10. Huntington's Epidemic How old were you when you first got involved in, in a serious way with a serious opiates? Way? When I was about 17. At number 10 on our list is one of Louis's most recent documentaries, and most saddening. In episode 1 of his Dark State series, he explores the community of Huntington, West Virginia, a city gripped by one of the worst heroin epidemics in American history. Fill this hole inside you <laughs> with anything other than God. That hole, man, that's what he, I hear a lot of people, that's, that hole no, is no, there. Buddy. You know, there is a big hole. It's, you know, right now, I'm in winter and I feel that big hole in my chest, you know. Whilst exploring the community and meeting those addicted to heroin within the city, Theroux quickly develops an understanding on how addicts' lives can become so dependent on the drug and how their usage of it can have devastating consequences for them and their loved ones. It's a difficult watch, and you can see the sadness in Theroux's eyes as he discovers just how substantial Huntington's heroin problem really is. How are you doing? Huh? How are you doing? I'm all right. Give me just a second. Should we wait? Just for a minute. Okay, cool. Right, cool. Thank you. Number nine, fearing for his own life. I don't want to experience that for one last time. That's why I'm leaving. The next moment happened off camera, but it had to be included as it's a moment Theroux himself describes as one where he genuinely felt nervous and in fear for his life. While filming his Drinking to Oblivion documentary in 2016, Theroux and his team had to deal with two individuals who wouldn't take kindly to having their experiences with alcohol documented on camera. Theroux states that one of the individuals put him in a headlock that was so tight he actually thought his neck might snap and that would be it. It's a moment that would have shocked viewers and made them feel all sorts of apprehension had the sequence been included in the final film. Becoming inseparable from your sense of who you are until a different, better life no longer looks possible. Number eight, prison politics. Tell me what you're doing over here. You're just relaxing. We're the white guys. Are you the white gang? In a one off episode, Louis Theroux travels to one of America's most notorious prisons, San Quentin, to meet inmates of the jail made up of serial killers, gang leaders, and some of America's most violent criminals. Theroux stayed for two weeks at the prison, and he learned a lot about the politics of prison life. You did to get beat up. Who would beat you up? Me. One aspect of this is racial segregation, a political position so strictly enforced by the inmates that two white prisoners warn Theroux not to share food with any of the black prisoners or risk being beaten up for doing so. Probably just mob you, like, like two or three dudes would just attack you. Three dudes would come up and attack me and do what? Pummel me? Punch me? How bad? Until the cops stop them. Louis seems genuinely taken aback by such strong feelings, and the mealtime becomes even more chilling when the prisoners seem content with having such systems in place. Number 7. An Unnerving Rally Louis had encountered multiple experiences of racism in the past, but maybe none as profound as this next entry. Whilst filming a documentary covering the issues of racism in American society, Louis interviews and spends time with a number of neo-Nazis and white supremacists to try and understand why they hold the beliefs they do. One way in which he tries to achieve this is by attending a rally, where a large number of neo-Nazis gather. You want, any of you guys want to talk about Tom for the documentary I at gotta all? go back here. I don't talk to you yet. Whilst at the rally, Louis listens to deeply disturbing racist speeches that fully vocalize the extreme ideologies this corner of American society subscribe to. This is revolution! Revolution! It makes for very shocking and uncomfortable viewing. I've always said I wouldn't leave California because this is going to be the start of the second American Civil War. Number six, racial tensions with police. During his visit to the city of Philadelphia, Louis Theroux wanted to explore how the city's police force coexisted with the city's communities, and how serving police officers were asked to deal with crime on a regular basis. Turn on! Ah! 
In one situation, the police make arrests in an African-American community. Many residents feel the police are too forceful and aggressive in their approach, and tensions threaten to boil over into something more violent. And Theroux is there to witness the underlying racial tensions between these two aspects of Philadelphian society firsthand. It's a haunting reminder of how fractious relationships between law enforcement and the wider community remain a contemporary problem in American society. You okay? Sarge? You okay? You okay? Yeah. Number five, too close for comfort. Whoa, that hit us. That was a rock. That was. Louis Theroux has traveled to parts of the world where political, social, and cultural differences are clear to see. This documentary follows the continuing and expanding settlements of Israeli nationalists into the West Bank, an area with a largely Arabic population that Israel has controlled since the late 1960s, and an area which is recognized by international law as belonging to the state of Palestine. <laughs> Because both Israel and Palestine claim that Jerusalem is their capital city, the continuing animosities between the two sides are clear to see when Louis witnesses tear gas being used in an East Jerusalem riot. It's clear from Theroux's facial expressions and manner that he is apprehensive as this deeply complex political problem escalates around him. I wondered if Boaz was still in his house. Number four, a tense standoff. In a feature-length documentary film, Louis Theroux decided to focus on the subject of Scientology and the mysterious nature of the religious organization. Louis. Um, Louis? Louis. Okay, the road's closed, you're trespassing, and you need to leave. Uh, apparently, it's a, it's a public road. No, it isn't. The Church of Scientology had refused to cooperate with the making of Theroux's documentary as he attempted to discover what the church really stands for and its place within American culture and society. Towards the end of the film, Theroux enters a road-closed area that is both eerie and unnerving. Are you so stupid you cannot see the sign that says road closed? But look, it's... Is there anything about that that you don't understand? We, closed? Look, well, look, I've got a permit. Do you know what... A woman and her cameraman in inform Louis that he's trespassing and needs to leave. An unsettling standoff occurs when Theroux states he has a permit. Tell him to well, stop. Well, you tell him to stop. Tell him to stop. You tell him to stop and I'll tell him to stop. How about that? Stop. The woman becomes more aggressive and volatile in her language, begging the question as to why she refuses to talk to Louis. Can we talk to you? Are you in the Sea Org as well? Number three, Koalinga. Hospital policy is to refer to them as individuals. In this next entry, Louis travels to Koalinga Mental Hospital, a medical facility in California that houses some of the state's most serious and serial sex offenders. Did he say 50 victims? Yeah, he's estimate, he estimates about 50 victims. Some patients and psychologists are very open about the past crimes of those at Koalinga. The documentary is uncomfortable viewing, and you can see Theroux grappling in a way as he tries to understand the patients and who they are while at the same time remaining consciously aware of the crimes each of them has committed. They all combine and shine to me. Number two, Louis' interview with Jimmy Savile. How did you get the address? No, no, I'll get anything, me. How did you get it, though? I can get anything. In the early 2000s, Louis Theroux decided to move away from his Weird Weekends documentaries in the US and focus on interviewing British celebrities at home. The first episode of his When Louis Met series was interviewing Jimmy Savile, a former television presenter and convicted offender. At the time the documentary was filmed, Savile hadn't been charged or convicted with any criminal charges, but rumors of his crimes were something Theroux was aware of. Why do you say in interviews that you hate children when I've seen you with kids and um, you clearly enjoy their company and you have a good rapport with them. In the documentary, Theroux asks Savile about these allegations, which is met with an evasive response. Tabloids don't, you know, pursue this whole, uh, is he, isn't he a paedophile yes. line, basically. Yes. Yes. In 2021, with countless victims having come forward and given evidence to Savile's history of abuse, 
looking back on this particular documentary leaves a chilling and terrifying feeling knowing who Savile really was. Number 1. Things Turn Hostile during his documentary covering white supremacists and neo-Nazis in California, Louis meets a family that is helping to organize a white supremacist rally. The family openly shows their beliefs with Confederate flags and swastikas pinned and on open display in their garage. Louis is a Jew. We already know it. I already know it. You're a Jew. That's why you got so much animosity. Louis, okay. That's why you we have can't so much say you don't look like a Jew. Wait. When Louis asks the question about if he was Jewish, would that be a problem, the atmosphere changes and the neo-Nazis become increasingly hostile and ask numerous times whether he's Jewish or not. Theroux isn't Jewish and remains defiant that he won't answer the question as it shouldn't matter whether he's Jewish or not. We want to know if you're a Jew and if we let you into our house to film our everyday ritual, Even are if you, you a Jew. I don't feel as though, I mean, maybe you disagree, I don't feel as though I've kind of compelled you to say anything. No. Or... Things get so intense that the family demands the documentary cease filming for a moment, a point where you genuinely fear for Louis's safety. Same Can way. we turn the camera off for a second? Pl pull, pull the plug? Pull the plug for a second. What for? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.